For this video, I'm going to be giving a demonstration on how you can cover a hardcover book or a notebook or a trinket box or similar rigid object with magazine pages that have been woven together to create this lovely checkered board effect. The items you'll need to weave a cover for your object are the objects of choice that you'll be covering, a good number of sheets from magazines in colours that are appealing to you and preferably two or three contrasting colours or patterns, a piece of sandpaper, some glue, preferably some craft glue or PVA glue, a pen or pencil, a ruler, a pair of scissors and some paper clips, bulldog clips or clothes pegs. It's fine if you use paper that's got a satin sheen but you don't want anything that is rigid such as the covers or very glossy. Soft satin or matte finish is perfectly fine. The weave is going to be made up of ribbons of paper which will be strips of your magazine paper that are folded three ways internally and this creates a nice effect to create some padding and it also means that they've got nice smooth edges for them to slot along each other and fit really nice and closely together to form a tight weave. And you can see I've got the paper clips here, but we will be using the object to weave around instead of it just loosely on its own. To cut your magazine strips, you wanna cut them lengthways and preferably use the full page. And you're gonna cut ribbons of four centimeters wide, but the full length of the magazine. So here's one which I've completed. And you need to cut a whole horde of these in the colors that you want to use. To fold your ribbon, you need to be mindful of which size you want to be on the outside. This is not the side that I want to use. I want those sort of darker purple tones. So I'm gonna fold it over on itself covering the side I'm not going to use. The simple rule is that we're going to fold in halfway up and then fold the other piece the other way over. I do this by eyesight, some people struggle with that and you may want to do a ruler but I literally pull it up till about the halfway point, make sure they're quite evenly balanced, press down the fold, not perfect but it's pretty close and then I simply fold the next layer back on top of that and what you land up with is a nice little ribbon that is very neat and perpendicular on the outside and it's just got a tiny little seam there you just need to make sure that this flap doesn't hang over on the other side or also be visible because you will be weaving it this way so you want it to be as straight and as neat as you can get it that way around. So it's taken me quite a while but here are all my ribbons to go. I've separated them into colors. I've got good half of them is just plain white or really pale printed sides. Then I've got solid blocks of colour or as solid as I can and I've split them or paired them up together. I have 38 in total so that was quite a few sheets of magazine paper and that's because I'm going to be covering an A4 sized notepad. The next thing I need to do is prepare the object I'm going to be covering. Anything you are going to cover should be clean and free of any debris or any dirt. This could probably do with a little bit of wipe down but um, it is very shiny and very glossy so that means that I need to to make the surface rough. So I'm going to take my sandpaper and I'm going to just shave it all down till it's nice and rough. So I've prepared my surface. You can see it's lost most of its coating. I've gone as close to the edges, all of them I can, even right onto the border. And I've also done on the inside where I'm going to put the anchor points just on that border as well. And then I need to do the other side and then I'm ready to start covering that. I've wiped it down with a damp cloth and I just want it to be completely dry before I start. The basic principle of paper weaving is having rows running vertically and horizontally, which are overlapping each other in an over and under pattern. So if these are the vertical lines, then the horizontal lines will be a different color, such as the blue, and they're woven over and under at alternating patterns. I've just pinned this under something heavy, got them lined up together. I'm doing just four as a start. And going from the left, I'm going to go over one, over one, under one, over one. Pull it through, push it up and then do the opposite when going, coming from the same side. So I'm going over, then under, then over, then under, pull it through. Pull, squash them together. Go ahead and do the next one. Under, over, under, over, pull it through. 
and then you manipulate them till they've all lined in really nice and tightly together. So that's the basic principle of the weave. We won't have any gaps, we'll make sure they're closed. It's also a good idea to practice on the side just so you can see that you're happy with how the colours fall and you might have a ribbon which for example doesn't actually turn out that nicely like this one's actually not got much text on it so I might not like that effect or I might decide it is a good one. Um, so have a look at your ribbons, decide on how you want to lay out your colours, particularly if you weren't able to find lots of the same colours um, and get a good feel for that before you get started. So I've done a sort of just practice of lying them down how I want them to be on the cover. Gives me a sense of how many I need. So I'm working from the edge. You don't want a ribbon to fold over the edge. And then I'm lining them up just to see how well they form together. I also decided I want the text to be upside down in the right way around in alternating fashions. And that takes me about that close up to the end. So I might put just a plain ribbon on the end there just to make it a lot neater. But I don't want to be cutting ribbons in half or losing them. So I'm probably going to stick with that. I'll line them up and then I'm going to glue them on the inside. So I'm going to hook these little top bits on the inside. And then I'll have my first bit ready but I'll leave the bottom loose for now. So I've glued and pinned down all of my anchor points. At all times I was checking at my bottom level to make sure that I they were all lined up nicely there so that you weren't having any big gaps and that the gaps at the top are not too big or too tiny that you can't get some of that volume to build up in there. So it's really just a little tiny little gap between each of them. I've got a little bit of glue squelching out so make sure you don't get that on the paper clips or else you've got a real problem in your hands. I'm going to just lift that glue so it's not sitting there and I'm going to leave these to settle for a short bit before I go ahead and do any more. Although it's best to leave it to dry naturally on its own before you get started, if you are in a rush or a bit impatient, you could take some sellotape and just reinforce it. Now I'm doing the same with the horizontal ribbons. I'm just measuring up how many I need from the top of my object to the bottom and how I want the colours to be laid out and then I'm going to add those anchor points and glue them in on the inner side of the cover again. I'm going to go ahead and add the glue and the anchor points for the horizontal lines, making sure I get right onto the very edge there. So once your anchor points for the vertical and the horizontal have been glued, dried and you're happy with them, remove the pegs and then we can start weaving. So I've removed all of the pegs and I've turned it over so I've got it tucked under, the anchor points are there and there, the horizontal are over the vertical for now which is fine and it's just folded around where the, the ring binders are. So I need these to be anchor points that fold underneath so I can just do a very light rough fold of them, pop them in there, line them up and I can release these ones. And I'm going to just trim these off because I know I'm not going to need them at a longer point. So the next thing to do is to open up your horizontal ribbons. Let them just fall over. And then this is your weave and we're going to now weave them in and out. But we want to get some glue under them so that's why I left this just loosely pinned. So I can release these, put a layer of glue every time I do a weave push it down and keep going and then once it's all done I'll put something nice and heavy on it to compress it so that it dries all intact. So I've done enough glue for about three rows so I'm going to try and weave them simultaneously. So I'm going to go down with vertical. I mustn't drop it down because it'll stick to the glue so I've got to just keep them up in the air for now. I'm going to go over with that one, I'm going to go under with this one and I'm going to go over with that one. That's my first one done. So I can now pin that down. I'll just put this, put my pair of scissors on top of this vertical one just to pin it gently and then I'm ready for the next one. So I know that I've gone, this one is over so I now need to go over with the top one, under it, over it down. Ok, 
Okay, make sure you don't twist them the wrong way around. And then you've got to feed them into each other nice and neatly. So we'll do this neatening part a little bit later. For now, we just want to get them all in the right position. So I can press down on the ones that I'm closest to, but I don't. I don't, still don't want to do that just yet because I'd rather neaten it up. So I'm going to go back down here. I'm going to go under, over, under, pull it through, and carry on like that. Right, so I've done the first three. I haven't pushed down, they're still very loose, and I haven't got all those folds yet. So I need to make sure that all my verticals are completely vertical, and I need to make sure that my horizontals go right up to the very edge there. So the first thing is to line up that horizontal ribbon, pull it really tight, nudge it up, and pull down all the verticals so you get nice sharp corners on the top line there, including the very last one. Then get your next vert horizontal ribbon up, lined up with it. So shift it up, shift it up, shift it up. Pull down each one of the verticals. Make sure they're not going skew, because once it all starts going skew, you can't recover it. So we've still got the wet glue under there, and we won't apply pressure until we're happy that it's all lined up, everything's nice and perpendicular how we want it to be. Right, so I'm onto the last row. Nudge this ribbon up. Again, keep tugging all those verticals down until you have nice tight squares and the joins are nice and tight. So it's obviously starting to touch the glue now, naturally on its own every time pull each ribbon and once you are happy and completely happy that those verticals are verticals they're still parallel and your horizontals are horizontals press it down into the glue and you may want to cut off these little tails here because they're interfering with or they, they may lift it from the glue a bit you may want to cut those down press it down. I would again leave this to dry for a short while before you flap those back to put your next row of glue on. Right, so I am ready for the next rows. So I've got to then go and put the glue there. But to flap it back, so that I, if you don't want to leave it to dry, you can put some, another weight on there to help pin it down while you do that. So I could use this trinket box I have here. Put it right back up to that last row that I have and then I can go and do the, the gluing from that stage onwards. So I do the same thing, lift it up until that bend and apply the glue. So very handy to have things to pin it back with as you're doing this. And then I'm going to go and apply the next three rows. I find three is manageable, you might find two, you might find one manageable, just make sure you only glue what you need and get into those edges nicely. Use the ribbon on the right there to guide where you end and start. Right, so I'm going to, instead of letting them all flop over, I'm going to start with the first one like I did before and weave the first three rows. So I need to check where I ended off the last time. I was over with the horizontal, so I've got to go under this time. Make sure you check the row before or else you will have a problem. And then you want to fold it in, get a nice tight bend there. over, under, get it over to the edge, then release the next vertical and carry on. So once you're really close like I am now, you see your angles are a bit wide, I can lift up that box, I don't need it anymore, press down those first three rows and like I did before, get the rows lined up. And I'm just going to keep on doing that until I get to the very bottom and then I'll show you how we finish it off. So I've pretty much covered and woven my entire hardcover. I've just got a block here just holding the last ribbon. The last ribbon did overlap the bottom so I'm just pinning it down to dry and once it's dry I will then lock those anchors underneath. The last thing I need to do is just with a scalpel blade or with a very sharp pair of scissors 
and a ruler just cut off all of those in a straight line and then you will notice that these last flaps on the end just these just every second row are may lift and that's because they didn't have glue between the two pieces of paper you only had on the surface so all you need to do is just add glue under those to secure them so I do that first then do the cutting and then we're pretty much all done So I'm just going to go ahead and glue the base anchor points in. My last ribbon has over run it a little bit, so I've just got to be careful to fold it in half really neatly, make sure it goes and wraps around as tightly as possible, use as many clips and pegs as I can, and only take them off when it's completely dry. A nice way to get the good angle is to take a ruler, sneak it underneath until you're right on that bend, fold them all together. So I have finished weaving my full cover. Um, fortunately, the web camera is getting a bit bewitched by the detailed flat surface, so it isn't focusing very well, which is quite annoying. Um, it's only on the surface that it's happening, so forgive that it's not very clear. But I have glued everything down, all the anchor points are here. It's a little bit messy on the inside, so if you want to cover that up, you can just get a nice piece of paper or card which you can glue on there. Obviously this is shiny, so I'll have to just sand that down. And then uh, for the cover, I have trimmed off all the edges really neatly. I don't like that the red ring binder doesn't quite match with my color theme, so I'm probably going to take a black or a dark blue permanent marker and just color those in so that they aren't standing out against the cover, which is really the pretty part. And one last thing to do is to cover it or protect it. Obviously, it is just thin paper that is quite fragile. Um, it should be glued down well, so it shouldn't catch on anything, but it could do if something really sneaks into one of those gaps. And also, if it gets any spills or humidity or water on it, it can get watermarks or start to ruin the finish a little bit. So I would strongly recommend that you glaze or varnish the top of it. You can use an ordinary varnish, wood varnish that you might have at home from your DIY collection. Um, anything that is clear varnish will work. I do two or three coats lightly and you can use matte, glossy or satin finish that will work nicely. I'm probably going to do this in a satin or a gloss finish. But yeah, sorry, the camera is not picking it up very nicely. The colors are looking a little bit muted as well, but I'm very, very happy with the final product and it feels lovely. It's got a nice sort of cushioning to it and it's very satisfying and pleasing to have finished.